Welcome back. And in our top business story, Abu Dhabi's Abar Investments has signed an agreement with China State Construction Engineering Corporation to develop 30 new properties in the capital worth 2 billion US dollars. The new developments will include office buildings, five star hotels, and apartments. According to an official statement from the Chinese company, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China will provide Abar with the funding, while China State Construction will be the contractor for the projects. In terms of China UAE ties, Abu Dhabi is expected to award China a huge area of land for oil exploration and production. And additionally, ADNOC agreed last year to increase oil exports to CNPC to 200,000 barrels daily, starting in 2014, according to news agency WAM. The Ministry of Foreign Trade announced that excluding oil, bilateral trade increased 9% in 2010 to reach 12.5 billion US dollars. Abu Dhabi's investment fund Mubadla is looking to spend around 20.1 billion dirhams this year, according to a local daily. The capital is expected to be pumped into a variety of sectors, including oil and gas. Additionally, it is looking to spend a large majority into its semiconductor unit, advanced technology investment, a joint venture with General Electric, as well as Mazda's solar energy project. Mabandla added in a separate statement that ATIC was making further investments in boosting capacity and research in a bid to become a profitable catalyst for the Emirates' economic development. The investment company added that its two most significant profit-making joint ventures last year were Dolphin Energy and Emirates Aluminium Company. Emirates has released its full 2011-12 annual report for the group, announcing its 24th consecutive year of profit, posting a 2.3 billion dirham net profit, and Donata marking its highest ever profit in its 52 years of operations. Emirates revenues jumped to 67.4 billion dirhams, a rise of 17.8% on last year's results, with a cash balance of 9.5% growth at 17.6 billion dirhams. Throughout the 2011-12 financial year, the group has collectively invested close to 14 billion dirhams in new products. At the Dubai Air Show, Emirates Airlines announced an order for an additional 50 Boeing 777-300ER aircrafts and 20 777-300ER options, valued at 26 billion US dollars. The airline has also a further 232 aircrafts on order, worth over 84 billion US dollars. For the year 2011 to 12, Emirates received 22 new aircrafts, its highest in any single year, and launched 11 new destinations for the period, including a strong focus on North America and South America in the final quarter. The group also witnessed an upward trend in its premium class seat factor for a second year, up 1.9 percentage points from 2011, 2010 to 11. Telecom Operator Do recorded a net profit of 666 million dirhams for the first quarter of the year, up from 412 million dirhams for the same period. The operator also announced that 320,600 mobile customers joined the company in Q1, bringing the operator's total mobile operator base to 5.5 million. Revenues increased 20.1% year on year to 2.4 billion dirhams, up from 2 billion dirhams. So with that, let's now take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. U.S. stocks fell for the fifth day in six on Wednesday as investors kept their focus on Europe. And there was also news that Greece will receive its latest de debt bailout payment of 5.2 billion euros in emergency aid. Well, to tell us more about its effect on the markets, we are now joined by Bruce Powers, the head of research at Trust Securities. Welcome today. Hello. So tell us about um, what sort of effect this has had on, on the markets this week in both Europe and the U.S.? 
Well, we've seen a little bit of technical damage in the broader U.S. market uh, this week with some key price support levels being broken. Um, and the markets seem to be putting it at top. If you look at the NASDAQ index and the S&P 500 index, they both broke uh, key support levels. Now, like you said, we've already been going down for a number of days, and downside momentum has slowed. So there is a possibility we'll get some short-term rally very shortly, but I would expect after that we'll go down again. Now, in Europe, we've got the U.K. and Germany have both broken through key support levels uh, this week, which indicates lower prices over the coming weeks or so. Uh, also, France has continued to trend down and Spain has continu continued to trend down, although we saw a little bounce today in Spain. Now, in terms of Greece, it looks like they're set to get their, their, next, um, their next bailout uh, package. Um, do you think this is going to stabilize markets at all? What's going to happen there? Well, I think it's a good thing that they are getting the, the payment because it's possible it could have crashed the market uh, without getting the payment, given all the uncertainty that's happening over there in Greece. Um, so. I think that, uh, you know, if you, if you look at uh, the, other, the other concerns are with Spain and what's happening with economic growth in Europe and the U.S. So there are plenty of other things to be concerned about. In Spain, we add yields on 10-year bonds again go above 6% this week. They were only really saved because the government came in and took over the fourth largest bank in the country, showing that they're willing to step into the financial system in order to uh, support the system and try to stay away from a bailout, which is really what everybody's concerned about with Spain.